All right. Good morning. Good morning, people. Man, welcome to Modern Manhood. It's a master class. You all know um, my name is Donnell Cole. I got Dr. Damon. And it's Freestyle Friday. I love to do these Fridays because um, we always have the opportunity to bring amazing people to the platform forum and have conversations that truly spark my enthusiasm for doing what we do, man. And so today we got my brother, my business coach, my mentor, my my uh, my, 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 my dog that invites me, make sure I keep um, in alignment with everything that's great in life, Asa Laveau. I'm going to give him a proper introduction, all right, because Asa has played such an extraordinary role, not just in my life and my development, but in a lot of people that I know that's doing great things. Um, he is the founder of Laveau Foundation. So he has a nonprofit. He is a business coach that helps entrepreneurs, and this is trademark, make their first $10,000 in business. And he is a CEO and founder of Queer Money Gang. Um, man, this is so funny. One day I was, you know how you have a dream and you're kind of going back and forth with your dream, trying to figure out things you want to do. And I'm like, I really need to write this book. And um, I go on Facebook one day and Asa says, F it, just write the damn book already. And he wasn't speaking directly to me, but I felt triggered and I was like you know what I'm gonna go and do it and I said man you know what he had this this thing he posted where he said hey uh, for a hundred dollars you can book a coaching session with me and I said I'm gonna do this and this is the first time I did a booking session with him but from one booking session I got four ideas that allowed me to truly monetize my dream and create four streams from one project that I was hesitant on and it changed my life so I wanted to bring Asa on uh, for multiple reasons one because I, I respect him I highly regard him in a lot of things in life. I just watched the Dave Chappelle, which, you know, Dave Chappelle is getting a lot of flack for his opinion and things that go on in life. But Asa is pansexual. He plays a big role in the LBGTQ um, um, community, and he is very passionate about being a servant this uh, particular type of space. So we brought him on today to just have a conversation about this, because I know, at least in my upbringing, and being religion, uh, re religious upbringing and being black, there's a lot of stigmas that's associated with how we live our lives. So Asa, welcome to Modern Manhood. We thank you for coming to the group. Um, let's chat, let's chat. Well, first off, thank you for that. Uh, for those, Dr. Donnell, Dr. Damon, to everyone that's watching and or listening, thank you for showing up, uh, being from Oklahoma, I dare not walk into a room, whether a physical room or a virtual room without speaking. So I'm gonna make sure I speak, make sure everyone, uh, I address everyone, but I do not, again, I do not take this lightly. Thank you so much for the, uh, the introduction. I have a high level of gratitude for you brothers doing this. Um, just thank you. Thank you for being willing and open to hearing someone that you're in a community with, but you are also learning another type of community at the same time. I just, I appreciate it. A high level of gratitude for that. I appreciate you. Greetings, greetings. I, I'm, I gotta Absolutely. tell you guys, I'm excited about this conversation too. And saying that, like Asa, saying that is, is that not like the root of so much of what we all wanna feel? Because we all move in these different circles, right? As, as men, or as a black man particularly, or as a man of, of, you know, who lives a certain lifestyle or who enjoys or appreciates or is, is um, able to live and thrive in these different spaces, but we all want to feel like we're respected and seen and heard. Mm. I mean, if, if that's not the case, we're, 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 we find ourselves in these situations where being others is, is the experience. And, and that's, nobody wants to, to, to feel and see what that looks like. So help us understand in some ways of, of your experience, your circles, your, you know, where, what you've seen, how we can bring a lot of that together. Cause that the question that you posed to us that we shared, like are all black men created equal? I mean, that, oof. <laughs> tell us what that means. All right, <clears throat> before I do that, I'm going to say this. This is important, not for you two to know, but for those who are tuning in to know. I'm not here to manufacture negativity. I am not here to manufacture discord among Black men. 
I am not here to manufacture discord around amongst black people. However, I am here to tell the truth based on my experience and the experience awesome. of others that I cherish and hold in my heart space. Yeah, I like That's that. what I'm here to do. With that being said, I pose the question, are all men created equal? That goes back to the African-American experience. The African-American experience being totally void of what the founding fathers were projecting onto our, into the founding of this nation. And that cognitive dissonance that was taking place mm -hmm. when they were saying, over here, yes, all men are created equal, representation, taxation without representation, all those things while enslaving a group of people. There's just right. cognitive dissonance around that. And I feel in 2021, post George Floyd, post the presidency of Barack Obama, that within the black community, that cognitive dissonance is still present and i do not at this point i'm not quite sure what to do about it mm. i'm not quite sure what to feel about it the only thing i know for certain is that it feels like hell mm. and the reason why it feels so utterly tragic is because when you when you look in the mirror or you see your brother reflected back at you, you would mm -hmm. think, you would consider that that other human would be there for you in a way that sometimes you're not able to be there for yourself. That's beautiful. And I would love for that to take place. And that's just not always the case. Um, now, I definitely have have thankfully manufactured um, and nurtured relationships with um, quote unquote straight black men in Oklahoma City where I'm from and all over the world that love me, that protect me and protect me and love me when I'm not in the room. Mm. At the same time, I, I receive a level of violence and energetic violence that would make our ancestors weep. Right. Yeah, I had a conversation with Dr. Damon about this. I said, because of the way that we've been programmed to view our social construct, we have dehumanized people below even being human beings because of our lack of compassion, because our lack of understanding, and because our lack of understanding how we should be able to perceive others relational, but most important, because our lack of own self-worth. And I think that the founding fathers have been able to shape society in such a way that a lot of us don't have a cultural identity. It's different from growing up and seeing a Malcolm X or seeing a Barack Obama, like you mentioned, and having an idea, individual that we can idolize that brings more of a, a compassionate nature or energy to service where we can look at other beings and see the beauty of them or see the God in them for that sake versus the way that we're taught to de demean other individuals with self-condemnation and project a sense of discrimination and not even know it. So living out this way where you don't even recognize you're perceiving and having hatred for another being before you even have a conversation with them. And I, and I appreciate what you said. And we still have people that, yes, you are correct, that don't think about it. And so it's this, sometimes in the black community, among black men, amongst black men, there's this not knowing for sure, just because of the way we've been conditioned, for sure. And then there's just an outright violence. Mm. Like, out right boosy level violent <laughs> absolutely wow <laughs> like, so i'm so i'm very clear yes wow. i'm high in intention yes i'm high um on 
making sure that there is a level of understanding because you need to understand so that we can then be understood. I'm very Absolutely. aware of that. But then I'm also going to call a thing a thing. Absolutely. Just call a thing a thing. There is a boozy level of violence um, that has been consistent for millennia. Uh, Absolutely. Break amongst, that down for us. Amongst, Break that amongst down queer for us, people. So let, so let me start from the beginning. Wow. Wow. Let me start from the beginning. We feel that queerness is void of Africanism. Mm. We feel based on what, so when we talk about the, our ancestors, Africans being enslaved, I don't, I never call us slaves. We were Africans right. who were enslaved. Yeah, absolutely. And we talk about different things that happened. And one of the things um, that we talk about within the slave narrative, yes, we talk about, you know, Mandingo fights um, that was, um, you saw that in the movie Django. Mm -hmm. So the brutality of it. And then there was also something called buck breaking, which um, I feel that was probably very much a tool of oppression for sure. And if anyone's just watching, you're not sure what buck breaking is, that is sexually penetrating a, a, a male in a family publicly so that they can now be reduced to a passive role in the community. I'm Absolutely. very aware. So it's a public raping of a man. Totally understand mm -hmm. what that means. At the same time, we consider that there was that Africanism, that to be African was void of anything queer identified prior to mm. the transatlantic slave trade. Mm. And so we feel that somehow queerness is synonymous with things that are European in nature. Hmm. So, so imagine where you have a white person telling black people, even though they brought us here, go back where you came from. And then my experience being a queer black individual, having black people say, take that back where it came from. Hmm. So if you have people telling you to go back to a place and then your identity telling that, go back to a place, where do you feel like you belong? Hmm. How was Let that? me ask you this. Yes. Okay, so I understand like there is people that don't understand the power of being able to walk in their authenticity. And mm -hmm. you come from an upbringing where your mom is, she's a bishop, right? My mother is a pastor. And mm -hmm. she is also the head chaplain of the largest hospital network in Oklahoma. Okay. So help me help me walk through going from what you're saying. We talk about slavery, we're migrating up to you giving yourself permission to say, hey, this does not fit who I am. And I need permission to be able to not just walk in this, but also serve a culture who may not understand the magnitude and power of what that means to be who you are in today's time. And you say because that, you got it, you got you got a queer money gang hoodie on, fam. I do. Well, branding is real, <laughs> but, it's, but it's bigger than that. It's bigger than that because I know people who say this is who I am, but they may not feel that I need to serve this community to help them prosper in this. So I think the role that you play is very different because you can be perceived as a spokesperson. You've done, you're doing, you know, like um the conferences like you're doing very very broad things that most people don't even think about so you're not ashamed to spread awareness and that means that you won't always like this no that means right so you had to grow even more into that so right. talk about that okay so yes i grew up church of god in christ absolutely no like real koji like i went to memphis every November and got checked out of school for a week to go to Memphis to go to Holy Convocation. Like I'm like Kojic Kojic. Um, so I was void of queer people. The only queer person I've ever saw on TV was the episode of Hanging with Mr. Cooper where RuPaul made a guest appearance and played Mr. Cooper's cousin from Atlanta. Wow. That's the only queer person I ever saw, ever. So I didn't even know. It was like to propose 
being queer to me in the 80s in Oklahoma was to propose veganism to a West Texas farmer in 1932. Like, wow. that, it's not happening. <laughs> so I'm void of the possibility. And so my, it's not that I was repressed over time, it's that the possibility had no place to allow itself to make itself aware at all. Mm. And so I followed the path. I was a good little church boy. If you meet people who knew me then, no, Asa was a church boy. Like that's what Asa was. I would, I would literally provide the center prayer to you at your locker. <laughs> All the way in. <laughs> like when I say I'm, I was Kojic, I was Kojic. So yeah. I dated women. I never had a, I never had the experience of I'm in sixth grade looking at another little boy in sixth grade saying, "Oh my God, I want to hold his hand." Nope, never, never. Hmm. Nope. Um, I then, you know, eventually became married, had a baby who I have a son, my S O N and my S U N and got into the military. And it wasn't based on trying to fulfill something it's because I got a bill in 2001 right. at Oklahoma state. And I was like, so I don't do debt like this $7,000. Like I only have so much plasma to get it. <laughs> I, it's just so much plasma in my little body i don't have seven thousand dollars so <laughs> i had to do something so i enlisted and then what happened i found myself being divorced mm -hmm. having that experience and then all the things that somehow i had blinders on about were released and men started coming to me and it wasn't that I got turned out or molested or raped or anything like that. They were, they were very respectful. Like, yo, I think you're attractive. I was want to know if we could go out. I was like, I guess so. I just wasn't thinking that much of it. Yeah. Like, I guess. And then things just incrementally progressed from there. And then I was like, okay, this can't happen. I can't be like gay or queer. Like, no, that's not a thing. I fought it. I fought it for a while, not to the point that I attempted to pray it away, but I just fought it. Like, this can't be who I am. There's enough going right. on. Like, I'm dealing with a heartbreak <laughs> from marrying my high school sweetheart. Like, I don't need this too. All like, right. I'm cool. <laughs> like, I don't want this. And then I thought about my son. My son was around five at that time. I'm like, who wants to have a queer black daddy? Man, I know what it was like to be called gay in second grade and then me fighting people about it. So who wants their daddy to be that way? Right. I'm like, nah, we're not going to do this. And so I was thinking about everybody else except me. Wow. So to be Black yeah. and queer, my thing is you start off provoking self-violence. Man. By not allowing who you are to flourish and not accepting all aspects of who you are. Aspects of you. Yes. You start off like that. You know what's crazy? People may not even view that as shadow work, but that is shadow work. Mm -hmm. It is me integrating every aspect of myself, and that in itself is a journey. I tell everybody, if you're Black and queer, you went through Dark Night of the Soul in multiple categories at multiple times. Absolutely. Intersections, right? How oh important God. is it that we understand and respect that that people as individuals and even the we live in intersections and we talk about it. We talk about the intersection of being black, but but being in what is um, kind of quote unquote corporate America and 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 needing to you know speak a different way and present yourself a code switch. Way, code switch, right? <laughs> we talk about that intersection because it's something that that we can identify with and it doesn't. We don't feel like it takes away from our identities. But when we're talking about a culture that takes away from the humanity of a person because of the way they live, it's hard for, I, I, I'm hearing you say that it's hard to live in that intersection yourself and even to acknowledge those intersections. And, and we have to be called to be more graceful and be more, be more understanding and compassionate with people because our discomfort with, with giving you the pronouns you request 
That's yeah. nothing compared to what you feel having to navigate that space yourself just to get to the point of saying so. Dr. Yeah, Damon, I, I appreciate that, Dr. Damon, for sure. And now I would like to offer you something called the Oppression Olympics. Oh, let's go. Mm -hmm. So would, you, would it be accurate that majority of Black people, Black men, Black women, feel is that there is no one on earth who is more disrespected than the black man or the black woman in america yeah okay is there anyone that no, no. does or does not just, just with that simple yeah so a lot of times black men and black women have created identities around struggle mm, if absolutely. i can't if i can't win at being the richest if i can't win at being the most guarded then yeah. i'll win at having the most struggle but then yeah. what happens when you meet a group that has more struggle than you mm. are you willing to step down from first place or are you mm. fighting for your spot right in a way yeah, that makes complete avoidance and denial of someone else's experience mm. Because I've, I've had to take, I've had to do um, diversity and inclusion um, classes and trainings with educational institutions. And I start with Black women. Black women, you feel this way. Now imagine if someone else could be more oppressed or have an oppressive experience than you. Can you even imagine the possibility? Because you, oh, yeah. we, we all want, we all want to be loved, adored, right. seen, valued, accepted. heard, accepted, all of those things, mm -hmm. we do. But are we willing to look to the left and right of us and find out who else needs that too? Right, yeah. Because we, we talk about things like the March on Washington. Yes, the, in the civil rights movement, it was a great movement. The three of us would not be in the positions we are we are in without that movement. Honor Absolutely. to our ancestors for sure. Like Maya Angelou says, I come into the room with 5,000. I get that, I understand that. And then what happens in the civil rights movement, which was started by a gay man named Bayard Rustin, who gets removed from the civil rights movement altogether to keep Martin Luther King's a marital affairs, a secret. There's mm -hmm. a deal that goes down with the FBI and the CIA that says, look, we know what you're up to. Either you fire the fag or we dismantle the movement. Hmm. So how do you feel like stigmas like that impact today's age in regards to sexuality? Nothing has changed. Because once... Because once again, I mean, Queer Money Gang is a movement. Yeah, as far as I understand. Yeah, it's movement, right? And so I think, hold on. No, no. The, the like LBGTQ, like movement community is really making leeway, even far more leeway than what Dave Chappelle even said. Like even more to the point to where council culture is like on 10 right now. So it's imperative if someone, I mean, I mean, it looks like it's obviously that if somebody gets offended, there's a lot going on, right? Like, I'm just saying, help me understand. The life that we already go in there with the Dave Chappelle. Let's go. At the root of that, because I love the way you, you, you poised the question about the acceleration of the movement, right? Mm -hmm. But the acceleration of the, of, of the movement is coded and saturated in privilege mm. as dave Chappelle was doing his best to say to us because guess what it ain't black gay lives that are canceling the baby it ain't Absolutely. black queer lives that are canceling dave Chappelle. why right. we don't have that much fucking power right that makes sense Makes yeah. total the, sense. The people, the people that are being able to cancel him and remove the baby from concerts and contracts and all these things didn't come from us. It doesn't <laughs> come from us. Right. Elton John got the baby right. canceled. Yeah, that's what I was. That's crazy. I was thinking too. And RuPaul yeah. ain't said a goddamn thing about it. 
Right. Why? Because there is an understanding in Black queer world that our mamas, our daddies, our pastors, our frat brothers, our sorority sisters have said more things to hurt us than the baby or boosie ever could. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And that's a truth that, that a lot of us aren't willing to hold ourselves as the people who genuinely love you, care about you, but aren't willing to back away from our discomfort enough to see that and be empathetic toward that. Right. I think this thing, this thought kind of shifted for me. I was talking to Dr. Damon. So my daughter has a best friend that's transgender. Mm -hmm. um, she's 16. And when she first came over and I started meeting her, I was referring to her as he. Mm -hmm. And it was difficult for me to break the pattern when I saw it. But she, um, one day, and, and her family comes for a great deal of wealth. And she says to my daughter one day, she says, you know, I could have anything I could ever want. But she was like, if I could trade anything, I would rather have your dad than my dad. She said, because you may not have all the money in the world, but your dad, he loves you. He, he was like, he accepts me as a daughter. Like I called her my daughter. And, and it was very, it was very touching that she came to me. And she said, you know what? My, even my daughter said that she was like, I never thought about it. Cause I complain sometimes about not being able to get certain things that I want because I envy the things they have. But when she came and said that to me, and man, I just hugged her. I hugged her because in that moment, I was like, it's not even about your gender. It's about you being able to be accepted for who you are wholly. Like, I feel like it was a soul to soul interaction that a lot of times because of the way that we've upbringing, we've made it easier to condemn a person to the point that they can hate themselves and not see all the beauty they possess. And to me, that was like one of the highest revelations ever, because I was like, you know what? It, I know what it's like to be a black man, grow up without a father, mm -hmm. but I would never want you, I would never make you want to feel like you're not, don't have a position in this world and make you feel like you can wake up every day and not be comfortable in your own skin. Right. To me, that is the root cause of suffering. And that is sad that even growing up in a, in a religious household, a spiritual household, that we can still be responsible for making the person that is truly beautiful feel like they're not worth anything. It's nuts. It's crazy. So I want to, I'm going to thank, first off, thank you for that. And thank you for hugging her. So Donnell, and I, in this moment, Please hear me with your entire body. You just saved someone from suicide. Absolutely. You, you, that little girl will grow up and have a thought at 3.18 a.m. about herself and then remember the hug that'll cancel out the thought. Absolutely. So I don't take that life. And I like the fact that you talked about parenting because when I, when we posed, we, when we co-created this question, are black men created equal? From a very, um, at a beginning level of this, we aren't created equal and we find that out from our parents. Yeah. yeah. So I know, I know that I may ruffle feathers, but I've been ruffling feathers for a long damn time, for decades <laughs> now. I really don't give a damn about all that. Um, <laughs> but let me just be very clear. The, we do have a high level of absenteeism with fatherhood in the black community. That's an, mm -hmm. that's an accurate step. Yes, we have millions of fathers that are there. I get that. I know the mm -hmm. statistics. Yeah. I'm not saying <laughs> you can have both. <laughs> you right, can have, right. you it's can. really high over here. And still, right. there's a lot of good black dads. It, there are both. Man. Like, seriously. Yeah, can, it is. Like, that's called being by you can have both right. <laughs> <laughs> okay so, <laughs> so with that said a lot of a lot of our 
self-inflicted pain, a lot of our feelings of being worthless. You know what a lot of that comes from? Our Black mothers. Yeah. And it seems to me that in the Black community, it seems like all Black mothers are all Claire Huxtables, and that shit just ain't true. Mm. All Black mothers are not Claire Huxtables. Right. There is a level of pain. Let's just talk about just without sexuality, I get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In the Black community, we have not even discussed how there are so many damaged and broken men that have been nursed at the bosom of emotionally retarded women i agree i agree we have been nursed at women who have had high levels of trauma that have not had the resources nor tools to process the that trauma and they have fed that into their sons mm-hmm. absolutely that's a reality we have not that's talked about that. so we talked about all men are created equal we aren't even raised equal a lot of us mm. are not even raised equal. If I mean, and I can say all these things because I've been able to reconcile my childhood with my mother. So I'm not I'm not spilling any tea. And that's beautiful. At all. That's to yeah. me, that's beautiful. But I say I say the spilling tea part because I was 20 before I got a hug from my mama. Mm-hmm. I would know I was 20 God. Why, and why did I get the hug because I was getting on the bus to go to Afghanistan in 2003 wow I can pinpoint the day I got my hug yeah and so that shapes us yeah seriously and let me say something else as far now, I'm gonna add the sexuality back into it. A lot of our feelings of being worthless come from our mothers. Yeah. Because the pride of black women are their black sons a lot of times. They are raising the men that could not leave. They are raising right. the men that they wish stayed. And so because of that, if your dream that you have been, um, nurturing for 20 plus years becomes shattered mm -hmm. because of your expectation, which I feel is the root of all suffering. Yeah. How do you reconcile that? And I feel like that's also a conversation at some, within all of us being able to go there. Um, a Cause a lot of times like Boosie, the only reason why Boosie or the baby or Anybody, I'm not gonna throw Dave Chappelle because Dave Chappelle is fly. He fly. So <laughs> not Chappelle Dave killed it. It was amazing. Uh, he, no, he murked that shit. For real. So, like he uh By okay, far, so like yeah. I will literally, I don't do this often, but like he literally, like he gets one of those. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're gonna come back to that. We got we gotta talk about that. And and I want you to finish this thought because like I'm hanging on. Yeah, yeah. So how you bring this together? We got to talk about what that is. And that that this is your reaction to that when we're seeing such a um, like the dichotomy of how people are on one end of the spectrum with Dave Chappelle mm -hmm. right now, and you literally living in that intersection. Is, right. I, I, I'm. I can't wait for you to help us understand so, what that what that is. But so, finish uh, the statement because you. Yes, yes. So for the, right for the baby and all, everything else, it's because women allow that. So let me be very clear. Straight men don't do anything unless straight women allow it. Because that hinders your progress in the bedroom. Okay. Or your, or your roadmap into the bedroom. So let me like, let me just, if, if whatever black women allow, black men get to do. Facts. Like it wasn't um, Bill, no, Bill Cosby, didn't really become canceled until black women started doing it. Mm. R. Kelly, even though we know that in our culture there's still oh, pretty, absolutely. a pretty good divide about the numbers, about his support. Yeah. Until black women really started like, wait a minute, I don't think that was right. That's when things started happening. Black women are that powerful. 
I acknowledge that mm. black women are that powerful. Whatever they allow gets done or not done. So that's that part. Now, as far as Dave Chappelle goes, in my black queer body, I well, first off, I, I, I black queer people around me were telling me, Asa, I'm not watching it. I, I I'm not gonna watch it. It's it's becoming too political. I mean, if it's that much, I already have enough trauma. Why do I want to go, mm-hmm. go get some trauma on top of the trauma I already got? Like, why would right. I do that? And I was like, well, you know, I do live in this world and I do want to be an active participant in the community. So I'm going to get my empathic heart, my empathic body, <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, set intention for it, and I'm like, all right, let's go. <laughs> yeah. And so I sit there, not with a intention of canceling Dave Chappelle, but with um, an idea that okay, just protect yourself. You've heard a lot of things in your life about yourself, right? Um, and and you don't know Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle doesn't know you. So regardless of that, you still got to pay rent. So at the end of the day, that's what that is. So I'm like, I'm watching it, and I'm like, okay, I understand that. Okay, understand that. Okay, yeah, that was true. Yeah, understood. Okay, yeah, I get that. By the end of it, I'm still waiting for the, but I'm still waiting for the thing that's not true. And the fact is, you can't tell me as a 38 year old queer black man living in Oklahoma that there is um, a divide in the queer community from white queer people and Black queer people, or what I like to call Afro queer, um, there is a a differentiation. I don't. I am not regarded well mm-hmm. in queer spaces in places like Oklahoma. I am not. I am. Mm. Not. I have to, the the only places in the world that I have been hyperly regarded was when I went to Europe. Hmm. Queer places in Europe adore me. You don't think people adore you here? Maybe that's just the onset of how I see it because but I but Donnell, I, but Donnell, okay. have you ever went to a gay club with me? No, I haven't. That's what I was about to say. So I've, I, you're hard <laughs> hard as a business, as a businessman. And let me tell you, Dr. Damon, so I was I was completely surprised that I was like, man, Asa is like the perfect mix of business and ratchet. Yeah. He was he would tell you how to make a million dollars by playing a knuck if you buck, fam. Like, and it was like it was thrilling to me. I was like, wow. And then I sat with Ace and like, oh, he's in the military. He has a son that he adores. Um, he has passion to truly see people evolve beyond the nature of the things that hold them back. I was like, Ace is beautiful. Right. I was actually defending Asa with one of my homeboys because he said, hey, I heard you say Asa was beautiful. And he laughed and chuckled. I was like, yeah, I think he is. Just keep it in the book because it's not a lot of people that you that you see like that. You know what I'm saying? Most people have a hidden motive or most people would project their own insecurities. But I didn't see that with Asa. But I also got to keep in mind that my frame of reference is totally different because there are another other spaces that Asa is in that. He's going into that a lot of people, you know, of our culture don't go into. So I appreciate you, know, you sharing you, you it. Spoke, Donnell, you spoke specifically to, to two things that you and I talk about all the time. And that is one, values, right? You, you have looked at a person in Asa and saw common values, saw common places where, where you could relate to, you know, to that pride in, in fatherhood, in that that business acumen and that that passion that Asa has in these different spaces and allowed yourself to see that beyond what a lot of people do. And let's face it, a lot of black men don't allow themselves to see those values in other people because they're they're already mm. apprehensive and pushing away from an intersection that they're not even a part of. And oh, missed out on that true. opportunity. Like Good intersections, point. that second thing that intersections are like business, fatherhood, 
just general manhood and really a passion for life. Those are all different intersections that you and Asa share. And I'm going to tell you right now, I share it as well. And that's why we can sit here and have this conversation. But as long as we sure. keep deciding as, as people and as, as men and then as black men to say, none of that matters because you stand in this space, in this intersection of, of what sexuality means for you, then all of a sudden we disregard the rest of that. Like, Thank yeah. you for saying that, because that's the space we need to be in and, and to continue to uplift and to continue to open the playing field for people to, to, to live together. Absolutely. So I got a question for Asa. So my daughter goes to school, right? And the teacher says, how would you like to be um, called? Would you rather be male or female or non-binary? So my daughter says, I was going to put female and she said, but I seen p- students in the class that were putting non-binary, non-binary. I didn't want to be offensive to them, so I put non-binary. She came home and told me about it. I was like, why? You do your hair, you do your makeup, clearly this. And she said, well, I didn't want to put that because I didn't want to be subjected to the high expectations perceived me. So my wife, I was like, well, that don't make sense because it seems like a lot of pressure. Like when I was a kid, you just had two boxes, cool, you're done. It's easy, but she says it's not that easy because if I check this, then I got to be this way on society, she says. And I'm like, but who cares, right? And, and, and Liz, you know, my wife, she's like, well, babe, that means if I check this box, I can't be a mechanic. I love to fix cars, right? And I'm like, but still, that's what you love to do. Who cares? Go do what you want. But she's like, society says that's not okay. So I'm like, dang, is expectations really that big? Then it dawned on me. I was like, is this non-binary thing like the next evolutionary stage of consciousness where we truly read labels of it? Or is non-binary just another label that has expectations associated with it? Or does society truly have that much influence over our lives to dictate how we should live based on a gender specification or classification? Help me understand this binary and non-binary thing, if you could. Mm -hmm. I can. Thank you for being open to just the conversation. Listen, I'm I'm trying to get everything I can out of you while I got you, all right? Right. Even for my daughter, because I'm like, (laughs) baby, help me, help me. All right. And the short answer is, it's all of them. It's everything you said. It's all of it. So, but it's all of it depending on your mental fortitude. It's all of it based on your personal experience. So where one person is saying, you know what? I'm gonna choose being non-binary because as India Moore, India Moore who would played on the show Pose, her quote that I heard them say was binaries cause violence. Mm. So when you think about the reason why people have gone to wars, um, yeah. The violence are, are associated with our individual experiences growing up and about the expectation of your binary. And when you do something against your binary, how violent things become for you. So that's what they meant when they said binaries create violence. Mm. So there is truth to that. At the other side of that, there are people who want to be so woke that they aren't willing to go ahead and do a great intense self-evaluation and they just do the thing that other people are doing, whether it be liberal or not. There are followers on every side of the human experience. And sometimes that is the case. And then sometimes, as far as myself, so the reason why my my pronouns are he, him, they, them, and God. Hmm. Those are my pronouns. He, him, I identify with being male. I like the male experience. I do. I really, really do. I like it. <laughs> um, however, I reframe manhood and masculinity daily. Exhibit A. Okay. <laughs> so I do. I, I reframe it every day i push limits to it all the time because i want to like hmm what is masculine today what is manhood today and then i do something because i'm not uh because i define that 
you don't get to define that for me. So just because I'm not willing to go with your definition doesn't mean that I'm not with that train of thought. The reason why I, like I use it. they, them is because it's just not that deep <laughs> to me. Like you wanna call me they, them, okay. Like it's also about being so identified with an aspect of your identity that you can have testicular pisosity about how someone refers to you that you're willing to be gay violence against that human. Man. If we're really gonna do that. You are so identified with the, the image of you yeah. That's why that's how where I went through Dark Night of the Soul to shatter the self image and recreate another one. That's Absolutely. I understand why I went through Dark Night of the Soul. I get that. So I'm just not that identified with someone else's expectation of what I should be or who I should be. Um, and the reason why I choose the pronoun God because I am. Absolutely, we are all that, and it's not in a way of how Kanye West gets miscommunicated. Uh, I feel like the way when Kanye says it, it's taken out of context, but I feel like the way that I say it, the way Donnell says, Dr. Dame, I'm not sure how you say it, <laughs> but I feel like it's the same way as Kanye says it. We understand that we are, we have God complexes, but, Absolutely. Not, but not in a way that says I am and you're not. Right. I'm telling you that my pronouns are God so that you can finally see the God in you. Absolutely. So this Power. is, I'm desiring this to be an affirmative reflection for you. I like it. Because if I am, oh yeah, you definitely are. Like you so yeah. are. Like um, when I, I've said often, and I'm sure other people have also said this, what is a prayer? A prayer is nothing more than a little part of God making a request of the big part of God. That's it. That's all a prayer yeah. is. And understanding your divinity, understanding that you really are divine. We yeah. are living, because what is the divine? What is God? What is source? It is an energy that creates. And if Primal. all three of us and all the masses that are watching us now and in the future look around us right now in this moment from the chapstick to the fan, to the phone, to the water bottle, to all these things. Once I am literally living inside of people's worlds, all this shit didn't exist once upon a time. Absolutely. Literally, it didn't exist. But somebody's like, you know what? I'm going to play God. And I'm going to create a world. And we are living in these combined worlds of all the gods that have ever lived and are living now. Mm -hmm. And creating That's what ourselves. This is. Yep, and, and still being called creators. Right? Absolutely. Exactly. So that's what we are. Creativity is the highest level of prayer. It's the highest level of worship. It's the yeah. highest level of identification to you being divine. This and that's dope. why I don't believe in the term being realistic because once upon a time all of this shit wasn't real right yeah <laughs> but yeah. like just create it like make it up so what about smart goals <laughs> <laughs> you said what about smart goals <laughs> yeah you know the r smart goals is realistic you're a business realistic, coach man. <laughs> we just, so we're gonna I, be smart goals just i'm a smart business goals. coach that does i so saw there are things as a business coach that i just do not align myself with and smart goals are yeah. one of them also yeah. waking up to the ass crack of dawn just because <laughs> Jeff Bezos does it I don't care <laughs> that, that's not my ministry that that's not my ministry five o'clock in the morning is not my ministry my ministry that's is fine. waking up around 9 30 10 but going until 2 3 a.m yeah because yeah. around 11 I get real nice <laughs> Like I can be uh, real nice around eleven. Like it's not, it, it just comes together, <laughs> right? Like it's just I'm, I I got you. I got you. I'm the same way where where if that's when like the creative starts to really just blossom. And I'm like, let me write this down right now. This needs to let me get on this flyer. This needs to look like this. That's exactly and and finding those spaces where like that's human. That's human. 
And if we don't give ourselves bless a to explore that, man, you got to. You, because I, I am a. But I am a 4 a.m. But Dr. Right? Damon and Donnell, the fact that Donnell, you are a, a early riser. And Dr. Mm-hmm. Damon, you are somebody that is able to create at, you know, the ass crack of the night. <laughs> And, and being able to not judge each other or make each other wrong when you Absolutely. understand who you be and how you're showing up in the world, that's your most true for yourself. So yeah. can you imagine a whole group of people making you feel wrong just because you work at a better time of day? Like how absurd is that? Yeah, yeah. And that's what it's like to be black and queer. Yeah. Like you wanna I, hate me for that? Yeah. It's egotistical, is what it is. And it's a, a poor form of human interaction and living. Living. It really is. So yeah. thank you for clearing it up. Mm-hmm. That's why I asked my daughter. I said, I think you might be on to something, baby. You might be on to something because mm-hmm. it seems like the next level of evolved. And some people may disagree, but I feel like it is basically something that allows you to be the most authentic being and your most authentic self and your most authentic expression. May I offer three things? Yes. And I will, and I will be mindful of time as I do this. Number one, because you brought up a, a trans person. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> For those of you that are watching, because I don't feel like I have to tell you this to Dr. Bayman or Donnell. Um, I feel like I need to say this for the consumption of our time together. Um, if you are really like, hey, I just don't understand the whole trans thing. Just in a nutshell, if you identify as a man or woman, can you just imagine, we're gonna play make-believe right now, people. We're gonna okay. play make-believe. So can you just imagine like you have a whole Freaky Friday situation and you wake up the other gender and not only do you wake up the other gender, you never wake up going back. Mm. no literally you never wake up going back like you just you're just in that gender now like you wait because if you identify as a man like no i like being a dude and you wake up with breast bruh and a vulva and old ovaries and a cycle i'm like hold on wait 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 this ain't me Like, wait, we got to get back to, this is not me. I don't know what y'all thinking, but this ain't me. No, I'm I'm not confused about that. I'm not crazy that I think, no, I know for sure. This ain't me. This is not me. It's the same way some of us that grew up in poverty knew that. So poverty ain't me. I don't know why I got born into this, but uh, I'm not supposed to be here right like i feel like never cut like i'm not supposed to like someone's not supposed to be here like i'm no there's a stranger in my home <laughs> about poverty <laughs> poverty's not supposed to be here yeah. it's so that's, that's what is that's trans that's you a great analogy locked you feel literally locked in the way that you are being seen and you need to change that like asap like yeah by any means necessary i need to show you who i actually am Right. So that's true. Okay. Powerful. Number two. Um, when we talk about, I like to talk about the stream of consciousness and non-binary possibly being a way of our societal evolution. A lot of times in the transformational or even motivational aspects of our, uh, when you go to a seminar and talking to a speaker, a lot of times you may find yourself going through an exercise and they will ask you this question. Who were you before you were born? Mm -hmm. So if we talk about that, who we were before we were born, we weren't assigned a particular chromosome yet. Right, pure consciousness. You are pure, unadulterated consciousness. Mm -hmm. And your pure, unadulterated consciousness did not have a penis. Right. It's sex and gender is two different things people got to understand masculine and feminine energy <clears throat> is not subjected it's only subjected your physical form is the physical representation of energy carnated in a body before that you're just 
energy, the same primal energy that makes up all of existence. Sorry, Asa, go ahead, keep going. Oh, no, you're not, thank you, because that's what I feel. Um, and so I say that to say, that's why another way I use the whole they, them now um, mm. as another opportunity, because it reminds me that I don't have to be arrested to yes. your expectations. Mm. I just don't. I don't have to be arrested to that. And then the third thing, I'm dating someone now. Let's go. We're not exclusive. So okay. that's why you haven't seen any pictures on social media yeah. yet. But I'm working on it. I'm working on it. You be mad, Buddha, fam. You be mad. <laughs> I mean, I'm it's coming to you. So. Lunch dates. And- <laughs> Donnell, Donnell has met them um, at the comedy show recently. But hold on, I, hold on. them like them, like the person you met, the person I introduced you to. Oh, okay, it's yeah, fly. Them as in person, right? Fly. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking, I was like, okay, Ace, I see you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I was, I would love to talk about that too. So I say that to say they are non-binary. Oh, legit. So they do not do the he him she her even though if you looked at them you're like oh that's a dude who's very feminine right but they're like no you don't get to put me in any box i'm them to you and so i literally have not not rudely but very softly and gently corrected people when they say like they'll 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 look at them and then they'll look at me like oh my god he's so cute and I say like, oh no, it's them. And then like, what? I'm like, oh, they go by them, that's all. I try to make it very, you know, it's whatever. At the yeah. same time, I sometimes mess up yeah. in front of them. And I don't always say the things that support them, but I'm, I'm very quick about changing yeah. it because they understand it really is about intention. But then they did something to me. They said something to me two weeks ago. And they said, I just want to let you know, I really see you trying. And just so you know, when I first started call, referring to myself as they them, I messed up for two months. Yeah. I said, wait, wait, you misgendered yourself for two months after you made the conscious decision? And they're like, yeah. I said, no one ever says that. No one ever talks about how you can misgender yourself and you have to give yourself grace because it just mm. feels like it's so violent when someone does it by accident. Right. So yeah. you need to talk about that. And that's why I brought that up. But then on top of that, what it's like to go to a black straight space in a same sex possibility. That was the first time I've done that in, in ever. I've never, wow. uh, I've never put my arm. I've right. never, I've never, dared to show compassion to the person that makes me smile in a room of black straight people hmm that was my act of civil disobedience monday night interesting because though i understand it's available for me though i understand it's not civil disobedience in the way of Gandhi or the way Martin Luther King. I understand that. So I didn't do a sit-in. Right. I'm very clear about that. <laughs> <laughs> but I had never dared to dream that I could be in a Black straight space and show affection to my person in that moment and not be kicked out. Hmm or not be manhandled. Cause I think Donnell, you may remember, or you might remember in the, in the next couple of days when you're thinking about it, I was projecting another level of myself that night. Yeah. Um, I was ready. Yeah. Yeah, I was ready. Like I was ready, ready. Like nug if you buck if you want to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was real <laughs> strong that night. Um, yeah. Because I had to prepare for what could happen. Oh, yeah, I see it now. Mm-hmm. I got yeah. you. I got you. I got I, you. That's not my normal. 
My yeah, normal, yeah. very loving, cheerful smile. At least, yeah, yeah. But I had to prepare, y'all. I yeah. had to really prepare because I understand that, you know, we in the Black community, we just don't get, we don't accept that a lot of times the same way. It's the same way as, you know, when white people come to Black churches, you like, hmm, what they here doing? <laughs> Facts. It's true. Like, we, we know that. When a white person, <laughs> yeah. especially... When somebody from the church brings a white partner, you like, oh baby, really? Oh, yeah. That's what we doing? That's, that's what we doing. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same thing. It's the exact same. Yes, dope. I appreciate you sharing that. This was like crazy, um, enlightening. I wanna I wanna tap on one more thing that I think mm-hmm. um, is is we really need to speak on. And this is something that um, that is an intersection for us as black fathers, right? How do we walk away from this conversation with this insight, with this understanding, with really seeing so much of your experience and experiences that are shared with with people um, in that LGBTQ plus community that you share with us? How do we take that, we take that and empower ourselves and really show up for our children and our families as black fathers right now in a space where <clears throat> we have to admit how much how much responsibility we have to our children. You know, you, you talked about these experiences that that you mm. went through, um, Asa, and, and, and that struggle with your family. And then we see, you know, Donnell's experience. And I, I'm gonna tell you, I had a conversation. I was hanging out with uh, with a old uh, a frat brother from way back from from Langston last night, and he talks about his um, you know his six year old uh, kid help like struggling with how he is having a conversation about his friend who is non-binary yes at six and he's trying to help his dad understand you know what non-binary is and we had this conversation last night and so what i'm hearing from and what i'm seeing on on on, as a person who's not in that community he's sharing with me that like i'm really struggling with that i was like my my six-year-old is telling me dad like you got dad no you gotta you gotta call them this and he's like, I'm honestly, like, I'm struggling because I don't understand it. And so you broke down what binary and non-binary is. You helped us break down what trans is. And those are conversations I was having. And I hope to God I did justice. And I'm going to say, hearing what we're, this conversation, I feel feel good about it. That, um, But how do we take that and we show up for our community and for our families in a way that, that these conversations are happening more and more? Like, you live in that intersection, man. Bring, bring us to the table. I'm grateful you do too. I really am. I really am. I had no idea just how encouraging it can be, um, how loving and how much healing that can come from this. You know, I really do. So I just want to say that. Thank you for that. And Dr. Damon, to answer your question, (laughs) our children aren't here for us. Yes. Mm. Somehow we have thought, we, or we have considered that because we played a part in their molecular structure. Right, conception. Somehow, <laughs> somehow they are meant to appease us and our expectations of them. Oh, Asa. Yes. When when did when did that become a reality? That's that's something we made up. That's called make believe. No one is here. Like you didn't create a toy. Mm-hmm. You, no, you did not help conceive a toy. There's a whole human there who is having Absolutely. a human experience that you don't have. Uh, you don't get to say what that is right and then we add things like selfishness and project that i did to our children Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but what are we really saying we're saying you are selfish because you won't allow yourself to change to appease how i me you should be absolutely because you won't change to do what I want you to do, you are now selfish. Mm-hmm. That's gaslighty as hell. <laughs> <laughs> That's so gaslighty. It really is. <laughs> it is, it's, it's because 
it's, it's holding it's holding you responsible for the way I feel and me right. controlling and manipulating so my emotions can be accepted based on the idea of how I feel like you should match my expectations. And it's a level of being a total coward. Mm. I'm going to go first. Talk about that. That's social. The way you are perceived, the way you look as my child impacts who I feel I am. And I will not let you break that. Mm. We take that mm. to our children and we have got to let that go. And, that, and that's exactly yeah. what I meant when I say we are cowards when we do that because yeah. we're so concerned with what everybody is feeling or thinking about us that mm -hmm. we then cause Man. violence in our children. Because we won't, we won't stand up to a community. So now we'll be cowards to our children. Say yeah. that again. Say that again. That's a hard truth. We will not. We will not show compassion to our children. So we will rather be cowards to our community. Mm. That's a real thing. Like, what is that about? Like, yeah. you feel so in like so. You create all your values from someone else's idea of you. Yeah. Like that's that's all this is. Like if they don't if they don't say yes to you, then you're nothing. It it, it means that much to just that's like that's slavery. Absolutely. Yeah. That's so we have to stand, we have to really, we have to be able to look at people that we say we love and we care about and we want to see flourish and give them the space to do that without needing to meet our need for comfort or feeling vindicated in the society that we choose to live in. Mm -hmm. We got to be able to detach from that six of dominion over another being as if we own that other person. I had this conversation with my baby one day. She says, you're so hard on me because you don't want me to fall for some of the mistakes you made when you don't <clears throat> realize I don't have a desire to make the mistakes you made. And I said, baby, you know what? You're <laughs> absolutely right. Because I grew up like this, I expect so much more on you. But I said, I would not expect it of you if I did not see it in myself. So I said, don't confuse the two. You may be right, but I, I can't do your journey. Mm -hmm. You're your own independent individual. My goal is to equip you for you to live out whatever expression that looks like. But she was absolutely right. We do that. We expect more for our kids and we don't recognize our expectations can be a hindrance in their development and whatever that looks like. So listen, uh, and Donnell, there's a question, um, there's a question, Asa, that I want you to, to, to help us answer. And um, so he's watching, watching us live and he's asking, so as a new father, what should I do with my expectations for my daughter? Expectations is the root of all suffering. I'm gonna say that again. Expectations are the root of all suffering. The moment you put an expectation on a person, meaning you have an idea that you will now like to project on that human. And when they go against what you expected of them, now you feel hurt, but they never bought in to your expectation. That wasn't right. clear communication. There was no communication at all. There was no clarity given. You made that shit up. Right. So the first thing is to get clarity around what the other person desires. Mm -hmm. And guess what? The moment they're born, they are a person. So it doesn't matter if you're not paying a light bill. It doesn't matter that you haven't moved out the house. You're still a human. Because if you don't allow them to share the human experiences until they're out the house or until they're paying their own bills, you will then lose them for the remainder right. of their lives because now they have no point of reference for a relationship with you. Man. That looks um, that looks reciprocal or understanding. So that's yes. the first thing. Your expectation of that little person, really, right now, what's that based on? Right. Because if they're, they're going to hurt you day in and day out based on your expectation of them. 
Yes. So please. Yes, that goes for everybody. <laughs> it does. We got to leave room for people to be human. Yeah. Have grace, have mercy, and start <laughs> looking at it like it's a journey. Your journey is going to be different from my journey. But that don't mean I could treat you differently. That means that even though you may be younger, there's always things I can grab from you. We are in each other's lives and we chose each other for the development of our soul's evolution. What does that look mm -hmm. like? That stems beyond an expectation because the expectation is a box that society defined for you. So now we live our whole lives with somebody else's ideas when that person don't get to live out our life. So why should we live as somebody else? And why should I do that? Why should my kid live like somebody else? And it's not right? just your kid. It's also your wife, your girlfriend, yeah. your boyfriend, your coworker, your boss. Because we give expectations to every relationship. My uncle, I had this conversation in my family. So please understand, these, these words I'm saying aren't just for Zoom, aren't just for Facebook Lives, aren't just for YouTube. I have these conversations in real life. And so we're in a family setting. And I'd say to my uncle, I don't expect, we're talking about um, being more family oriented. And so my large family is present. And I say, well, I don't expect anything from you. And they're like, he like, nephew, that's bullshit, nephew. Like, how are you <laughs> going to say that? You supposed to expect from me. I'm your uncle. I said, no, 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 no. This is what's true. You are my mother's brother. That's the only thing that's accurate about this relationship. Mm. Everything that comes after that is based on a soul tie that we are willing to nurture and develop. And that comes with understanding your capacity. Do you have the capacity to come to my book signings? Do you have the capacity to help me with rent when I'm low? Do you have the capacity for me to cry on your shoulder when I go through a breakup? Do you have the capacity to answer the phone when I call because I just wanna talk? because I want to be around family in an energetic way. I have to be very specific about your capacity rather than my expectation of what this particular mm. blood tie. So I don't want to confuse the blood tie and the soul tie. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. the blood tie says uncle, the soul tie says stranger. Wow. So I don't want to confuse the two. That's powerful. But I think that speaks to, to kind of the philosophy that I share when it comes to <clears throat> expectations. Expectations are, are, they're so damaging and they're mm -hmm. one-sided. And that's not to, you know, to denigrate anybody who, who has expectations. What I share and what I say um, is, here is my ask. I don't have an expectation of you, person in my life, but here's my ask. Because mm -hmm. I want to, mm -hmm. I want to give you the opportunity to show up for me in a way that, that shows me that you see me and you hear me. So I'm not mm -hmm. expecting you to show up for me in a way that I always get a phone call on Fridays or else that means you don't know. I'm asking you to check in on me when you think about me. Right. And I can, and if, and if you aren't checking in with me and that means you're not thinking about me, you're not, then that's, that's a you thing and that's okay. Because I can live with that instead of living with the, the weight of, of an expectation that we never meet. We never meet. Mm. So I, I, this is my answer to that question. What do I do with my expectations? Learn to present what your ask is to people in your life and give them the space to either meet that or, or figure don't. out if, what relationship it is between you that needs to be that allows you all to share life the way you want to. Because in the end, if you ask somebody for a burger and they ain't got no burgers, do you carry a, a hatred towards that person? No. But if you expect them to have a burger and they absolutely don't, now you're in trouble. And and I I so Dr. <laughs> Damon, thank you for that. And I Man. have I've had to do that. I've had to do an ask recently. So again, going back to relationships, the person that I'm dating, non-exclusively at the moment, um, just in case they see it. <laughs> um, the thing about it is just because I'm spending time with you doesn't mean I have permission to pursue you. So I literally asked them one day, do I have permission to pursue you? 
because sometimes we feel that just because they're single, it means they're available. Mm, that's good. And we also do the same thing with every other relationship in our in experience. Lives. We, yeah. you know, we just, we don't ask. We don't say what we need. Um, and I've had to say that to my mother. I'm yeah. like, so here's the thing. Um, you, right now, you're expecting that I'm supposed to respect you, okay? Now, we're talking about Black mamas, right? Okay. So I'm supposed to respect you. So the way I can respect you while protecting my energy, my ask is that we not speak for a week. Wow. Powerful. I, I, I desire that. I need to not speak to you for a week. And so she really didn't get it at first because she hit me up again. I said, so here's the thing. So I actually answered. I said, so here's the thing. Remember when I said I don't want to talk? And I, I was real clear about that. I'm 38 years old. <laughs> I'm 38. I know that I do not in this moment have the capacity to talk in a respectful manner, in a respectful way, because I'd rather not talk than put let, prostrate my body over your casket because I have a memory that I disrespect you. Right. I'd much rather do that. So yes, all of this um, is can be done with any relationship. Um, and also, if you have a queer identified person, going back to our topic, you have a queer identified person in your life, you get to ask the expectation as a quote unquote straight person. So you get to say, I have a ask of you. Can you, some people have asked me these things, literally, can you not kiss your partner in front of me? Because I'm uncomfortable. I've like all these things. Yeah, that has been said. To me. So, well, where I say thank you to them about giving me an ask and rather than not having an expectation, my response is hell no. Or as Sophia put it, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I'm not willing to do that because. I now choose to go where I'm celebrated and not only tolerated. Absolutely. Because mm -hmm. as Black people, I think that we forget that um, we have an entire experience from our white siblings in this country that hasn't been 100% positive, And we sometimes do what they have done to us, to each other. So yeah. the same way that white people have, have had a history of saying things like, mm, you're colored. In 2021, people are still saying, oh, that colored guy. Colored. Yeah. And then we get pissed off about it. But then when you refer to the community that I'm involved in and you say things like, you know, them alphabet people, them elemental P people. Yeah. Like, yeah. we pretty much told you what we want to be called. It's in papers and magazines and yep. YouTube videos and Facebook lives, but you won't allow me to be called what I want to be called, but you want to be called what you yes. want to be called. It's, mm -hmm. it's like you, you're only thinking about the level of respect that you deserve, but no one else's. Yeah. That's yeah. just not fair. We need more empathy. Definitely. A lot more empathy. I, that's the right more empathy that'll wrap up everything we've said I'm about I to say, yeah. this with a with a um with a uh a comment and and we have another brother who's who's watching us live and he he expressed very specifically that he doesn't think expectations are bad and that they're necessary and and his you know the way he shared that is that if you buy a car you expect it to work in a certain way and um i gotta i Hearing that as the example, that's kind of exactly what we're saying is having expectations on people who are fluid, who, 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 are, who have control over their lives and who change and grow and shift and have different needs. Having an expectation of them is not the same as having an expectation of a car that was built a certain way to do a certain and, thing. And, and so I, actually, I, I don't know. I would, even, I, I, I would even be conscious of that because there's a difference between okay. the expectation and the desire. So now when okay. my car breaks down, it shouldn't break down, but it's a machine. It's going to break right. down. <laughs> you should not have an expectation. You should be mindful of 
things that you attach yourself to. Why? Because there's a limitation in that. You don't want to place any limitations. Now, do we have a desire for things to work out the way that they do? Yes. It's just like if I'm in a marriage and I'm like, well, because I'm married, I expect my wife to give it up anytime I desire it. No. Even though it would be healthy in, to have a reciprocal relationship that's in alignment, it would be a beautiful thing. Yes. But if it doesn't work out that way, does it take away from me? That's the answer. Because when it doesn't work out for you, how you feel like it, now your feelings are hurt. So you got to be mindful of that. You can't attach too much of who you are. And that's the reason why we got so much war in our world. There are people that literally say, because of this belief, I feel like it's a righteous indignation. I have the pride to go out and attack and destroy and enforce and control. Bro, that's the reason why we got so many problems. But if you allow nature to just operate in the way that it's supposed to and go with the flow, you will find it so much more ease what happened in your life and less suffering. Just show up. And the beingness, we're missing the beingness. That is the problem. So that's that's my rant. I'm done. Listen, I'm so just saying. I, 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 I bought, I bought a, who, who hasn't bought a new car today, breakdown? You're like, I expect it away. <laughs> then you go get mad at the mechanic, and the mechanic's like, bro, I'm just doing my job. Then he's like, oh, there was a there was a recall. So now we blame the manufacturer. The manufacturer just had to produce more cars because of the way the economy was. So now we blame the economy. You'll find yourself blaming everybody. Bro, that's when you relinquish your authority because you have become a victim to your expectations. That's not freedom. I don't like you, can have, you can have a different opinion, though. That's just the way I believe. It's, not a, different, of, it's not a different opinion. It's a compounding so why are you so angry that the car broke down to my that's so that's a question that's a great and question my, and my response to that is i i first learned this from erica badu i know i could have read this in a book but i didn't <laughs> <laughs> we all come we all operate from two energies an energy of love or an energy of fear and a lot of times when we are having an expectation, i.e. a car breaking down, we have a fear of being seen as though we're not enough. Mm. And so when our car breaks down at, you know, at our workplace and we have an ego attached to us at our workplace and now somehow our image is shattered in our minds because we have a fear yeah. of not being enough. Because remember being eight years old and being called little boy, you ain't shit when you were eight, standing in line to get your graham crackers. And now you 52, still having this, this, this un, um, unexamined possibility of feeling worthy. And so now everything is attached to you being in fear about not looking and seeing being worthy. So it's compounded. And so yes, we, we could be having an expectation conversation or are we having a self-worth conversation and a self-worth There we go. Yes. And that's also when it comes to a white sibling uh, not projecting love to Dr. Damon and Donnell, that could look like a same conversation when I go to a place in Oklahoma City with a lot of straight black people and they look at me some type of way when my arm is around the person that I'm interested in. It's right. about what is being projected in a fear way mm. um, onto someone else. So my thing is, as you operate in this day and every day thereafter, you get to ask yourself, am I operating in fear or am I operating in love? And so when I got, when I'm getting angry about my child um, having non-binary friends, maybe it's because I don't want to be seen as being gay. Because I remember how this one little boy was called gay and they beat him up in the bathroom and yeah. he had to be hospitalized as an elementary student. And I remember being like that. And I remember I had to protect myself. So to protect myself, I had to do gay bashing right. so that my fear wouldn't be manifested. And so that's now become a habit. And a habit is nothing but a belief. And a belief is just an idea you keep thinking. Yep. yep.
You gotta explore that. Thank Oof. you for that. You, you, this, this conversation, I think, has so many different layers and levels of exploring, exploring the human experience, the spiritual experience, and then the human mm-hmm. experience, and then the the racial experience, mm-hmm. and this, and the the experience in, in based in the construct of sexuality and all of that. And so, thank you for this. This has been awesome. And I'm going to tell you one space we didn't get to that we obviously need to do another another uh, conversation about is the business experience. Because your work in not just queer business, but in business mm-hmm. and, and, and helping people to visualize and bring their dreams to life, like, we need to talk about that, bro. I, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm and down. Soon. And soon. So, so that's a whole, that's a conversation that, that, um, as, as grateful as I am for, for this meeting today, we need to get to that space. And so we, we got to make that happen real soon. Um, I'm totally with it. Good God. This is awesome. That's great. So look, we're going to wrap this up. <clears throat> All right. So uh, Asa, thank you so much for sharing space with us this morning. Thank you so much for being open, for being authentically you, unapologetically, for uh, your expression, for your love. For all you do, you guys, he's an amazing business coach. I want to just say this. He helped me publish my book. He helped me get clear on my book. And he does so many profound things. Amazing speaker, uh, international business coach. I mean, his, his list goes on and on and on. So I do want to say that Asa is more than just his gender, more than just the pronoun. Um, he's a beautiful being. He's a beautiful being. So we're so grateful to share this. I know that this has been something that is not comfortable for a lot of people, but I'm grateful we are having this because this is something I truly desired. I wanted to learn about. Uh, Dr. Damon, you want to tell them about modern manhood and what we got going on? So um, we've got a meetup coming up, guys, and this is going to be a dope one. This is going to be, um, we are planning to do a meetup on the last Monday of Monday, every October month. 25th. So October 25th, this is coming up, and uh, it's going to be a dope one. Our man of the hour is is none other than Glenn Whitaker. We we know that you know there are spaces for guys to get together and you know shoot the shit, and or we might be getting together for a game that's playing, or we might get together to go you know have a drink. But where are the spaces where we can bring all of this together? Let's talk. Let's talk about the experience, right, of being modern men and the intersections. Again, you know I love that word. The intersections of where Glenn has been able to find success and happiness and love, but also deal with the struggle and the strife and of of entrepreneurial, um, you know, exploration and owning a business, but being a poet, being an entertainer, being a father. These are spaces that we, sometimes we gotta, we gotta decide to come to the table and ask some questions and talk about it. And so this is what this meetup looks like. It's, um, we're going to share this at, um, at Mark Flynn's creative space. It's $15 for a ticket, but we're also having catering by plates to go. And if you haven't seen us talk about this, um, what Jay is doing and what he is, how he is literally serving the community, um, yo, this is an event that you don't want to miss. And he He's just, got, um, it, limited it, space, Jay, so I know, get in. And Jay, I know you listening because he says, if someone orders for me to cater, there should be an expectation of great <laughs> service. And you know what, Jay? You're absolutely right. Right now, I have an expectation that your food is going to be incredible because you're an incredible person. But that's who you are. But if it's not good, it's not going to impact me personally because I am more um, excited about you and your presence than you are and who you serve. And you are more than what you do, brother. So I understand the point you're trying to make. And I want to say, I hear you. I truly understand you. But anyway, that's it. Go ahead. No, that's dope. I'm so glad you saw that and said that, <laughs> man. But that's, and that's our point. So as part of, of, of our modern manhood platform, culture, space that we're building, we, we are inviting, um, we're inviting you to the table, brother, literally. So uh, come and hang out with us October 25th. I'm saying us, but I'm not going to be there. I live in Atlanta. I'm kind of salty about it. But yeah, I'm going to put that face back on because this is something we're excited about doing. Um, also, we've got, um, I'm going to say this now. If you guys haven't um, heard about what, what the masterclass is, it is an experience um, that Donnell and I have really curated. It's evidence-based. It is it is an experience that is altogether spiritual and it's about growth. It's about seeing and, and knowing your ideal self. It's about learning how we manage our emotional health and our, our wellness. It's learning how, how we're showing up to the table and, and how we're showing up in conversations and really finding 
like a small fraction of your of, of a two hour session to really walk out of this as a better man for yourself, for your family, and for your community. We are doing and scheduling our first live masterclass in Oklahoma City coming early 2022. And it's about to be dope. I'm super excited about what this looks like. Um, <clears throat> keep your um, keep your lookout because I'm sh I'm sure we're gonna also share. Um, we're gonna try to do another um, virtual masterclass. I think that needs to happen. So we're looking forward to a lot of dope projects. Oh, and if you are in our if you're not in our man cave group, you need to be. You need to send us a message or check us out. Go to the website at um, manhoodmasterclass.com Manhood and click on the button that says join the man cave. It's going to take you back to the Facebook group. This is the space where we're sharing resources. We're sharing um, interviews. We're having conversations that we just aren't having personally because we want to provide a space for, for us to explore that and learn and grow together. And um, let's see. Hmm, there's one more thing. Finally, our um, health and fitness challenge started earlier this week. Yes. So Cody came in live into the um, into the man cave and did a live workout with us, right? If you haven't done that workout once or twice or even three times, I did it twice, I'm gonna try to get another one in, then you are missing out on an opportunity to, to really take care of yourself. We have to take care of ourselves as, as people and as men physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. This is an opportunity to go in and get a good workout in. Next week, we've got Emmanuel coming up, and he's about to kick our ass. I already know it. Damn, he's going to come, that, in, he's gonna come in live <laughs> in the man cave and take us through a workout. That workout's going to be there all week for us to ask questions, for us to explore, for us to figure out how to make it better for us as individuals, and to talk about his work and his passion and what he's doing. We've got, I've got, we've got at least six um, six workouts already planned and this is this is a space where we want to introduce you guys to, to to broaden your scope on what health and fitness looks like so we're not just doing push-ups and pull-ups we're, we're going to be exploring Zumba I got a dope Zumba instructor who's been doing this for over 12 years who's coming in to take us to some Zumba I've never done Zumba before and I know a lot of guys who don't because we're not walking into that space we're bringing it to you I'm teaching a Tai Chi class in a few weeks if you've never experienced the invigoration of Tai Chi, you need to be there. We hey, got to so go ahead and get in the man cave. Right. Get in the man cave and explore <laughs> this with us and let's do this. We're doing, um, oh, we've got, I've got these, um, these guys of inner black yoga. yoga. They're going to come in and do a yoga class for us in a couple of weeks. Y'all like Wakanda know? black people. Yeah, man. Listen, so, hey. so, so we, we're going to have a boxing workout come up in a few weeks. This is a space where we want to bring the world to us and explore it in a place where we might be more comfortable. And we want you all to, to, to really see that health and wellness is bigger than doing push-ups and taking protein shakes. And those are dope things to do. But that's bigger than what we, what it should look like, especially for black men. Yeah. So let's explore yeah. what it looks like. Jumping on this health and fitness um, challenge. We're trying to give away some prizes, but we can't do that if y'all ain't doing nothing. Right, absolutely. Say it. I'm excited. So hey, one, one thing. thing. I do want to thank everybody that tuned in. Jay, Kellen, I know you was posting. There's a uh, Charlisa. Charlisa, I don't want to ruin your name, so please forgive me ahead of time. Um, is it Alicia? Yeah, Alicia, you know, okay, Alicia, thank you for tapping in. I appreciate you all just taking out your time to, to listen. Absolutely. It looks like this, this gave a lot of value. So thank you all for making space and also contributing to this because we couldn't do this without you. Absolutely. This is See, I just think y'all dope. Like y'all real dope. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> appreciate that. Appreciate thank that. You. This, so share this, like, space, share. Share it, you guys. I think this is a conversation everyone should hear about and know about. So share it, all right, and like it. And make sure you join the group if you're looking for an amazing um, group that you can be safe in. You can discuss things that's on your heart because I believe iron sharpens iron. And I get, I, I'm passionate. We're all passionate about helping each other win, helping us all win with whatever, whatever capacity it looks like, all right? Absolutely. So I'm about to jump off. I love y'all. Yeah. Asa, go have an amazing day. Continue conquering the world because I know you're going to do it. Dang. If there's anything we can do, just let us know. Anything we can do for you, let us know. Thank right? y'all. I'm about to go we get my CMOS right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm about to go get my CMOS too. <laughs> I'm about to go get my CMOS and get a haircut.